trying to shoot a reddit lucio is the same as trying to shoot a tap strafing octane right at least that's how i feel because apex legends has a lot of similarities to overwatch with its fast movement and character abilities and with ea kindly sponsoring this video for their third anniversary it's only fitting we bring a similar style of content over here as well. My name is KaraQ and let's go over one obscure tip for every Apex Legend. Starting with Ash, if you're low and you know the enemy is going to chase you through your ult, step backwards immediately upon arriving and try to beam your target. Ash's ult will always reorient your crosshairs in the direction of its pathway. That means enemies who chase will always have to waste precious time turning around, trying to find you, put their crosshairs over you, which allows you to turn the tables on them. Bangalore smoke can break the first state of doors without visually showing that it's cracked, allowing you to one-hit the door for a quick rushdown on the enemies. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether your Scanna's Bloodhound will reach the area you want it to. That's why it's important to remember that the scan has a maximum range of 75 meters, so a cool tip here is to simply ping first and look at the distance to get a reference check. Placing Caustic's Barrel on one door of a double door entrance is a common tactic because it can't be shot from outside and your teammates can still go in and out freely without having the enemies pop the barrel too early. If you place it in the middle, sometimes enemy players can crack open the door just enough to pop the barrel for free and we don't want that happening. Crypto can fly his drone up to a maximum of 200 meters, but it doesn't automatically recall until you're 240 meters away, meaning you can leave it at a beacon, wait until the ring closes, and then hit the beacon for the next zone, all while staying between 200 to 240 meters away. This helps you save red zone damage while you're waiting in the zone. Fuse's identity revolves around the high velocity grenades, but it can be tricky with frag grenades specifically when fighting enemies on high ground. Turning the option off so that you can time and aim your vertical grenades works much better in these situations. Gibraltar's bubble can be placed in a way to stop doors from getting kicked in from the outside by having its edge right outside the door. This can be a huge lifesaver if a team is trying to rush you down. If an enemy is holding the door, you can throw Horizon's ultimate beside it to break the door for you and suck the enemy off to the side for a much easier push. Lifeline's res is a little slow as it locks you in the animation, but you can bypass this by sliding and resing them as you pass by, maintaining your speed and momentum. You can throw Loba's bracelet through the windows, which can be a great way to flank an enemy who's holding the door while healing. Mad Maggie's ultimate does about 20 damage normally, but you can actually stick your riot drill to it to do a lot more damage and create a spinning fireball. For Mirage, you can send your decoy into grenades, Watson fences, and fuses mother load fire to reveal their location through that little indicator. It's subtle and not too many players know about this. For Octane, you don't have to take off on the opposite side of the jump pad to go backwards. Simply melee it to accomplish the same thing without wasting any time. Perfect for when you're getting chased to juke your enemies. For Pathfinder, you can do something called a grapple hop by looking directly down, grappling the floor, and then jumping as soon as it makes contact. This is much quicker than the traditional grapple and allows you to pull out your weapon faster. This will likely outplay your enemies if they aren't expecting it. Super gliding is a movement tech that allows you to gain a burst of speed after climbing a wall or object. Rampart has the convenience of being able to place a wall down wherever she wants, giving you the option to use this movement tech as you please. You can do this by climbing, then pressing jump, then crouch in that order, but like really quickly as if you were pressing it at the same time. This is going to take a lot of practice to get the timing down, but once you do, you're set. If someone is chasing you around the corner as Rev, you can wall climb and hopefully fake them out to retake the advantage on them. For Seer, an obscure tip you might not have noticed is that your minimap also shows the effective range and distance of your heartbeat sensor, and it changes colors when someone is within range. Additionally, it has no delay, unlike your heartbeat sensor, which pulses every two seconds. For Valkyrie, you can actually fire your missiles directly behind yourself to slow enemies down that are chasing you. To do this, you need to hold your tactical button to see all the missile indicators, then run, jump, and aim directly down as far as you can and release your missiles. 
Here's another angle to show you what it looks like. This will not work if you try firing them without holding the tactical ability down first because they'll just launch in front of you, damaging yourself. When holding a building as Watson, a traditional fence looks something like this. However, you can leave a node outside the door in a subtle place and 99% of the time, the enemies will not notice it as it's super tiny. If an enemy decides to push your door, you can immediately extend a fence to that pre-placed node, catching them by surprise. For Wraith, you can do something called a Crouch Portal, where you activate the portal on the bottom of a crouched bunny hop. The portal exit will look squished and smaller to let you know if you've done it right. Any enemy that chases you through it will be stuck in a crouch position, making them slow and extremely easy to beam down if they don't uncrouch immediately. Here's a clip from Quake VX demonstrating in a real game where he kills an enemy and then does a bunny hop right there and then ports through, creating a crouch portal on the other end. Remember, people who take the portal, no matter which side you end up on, will be crouched upon exiting. Quake takes it back, he's actually crouched, he uncrouches because he knows he has a crouch portal, but the enemy doesn't know that, and he comes out and gets beamed. If you made it to the end here, thank you so much for watching an Apex video on a predominantly Overwatch channel. Um, subscribe and follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash